When Life Fitness began, it only had one product, the Life Cycle Computerized Bike. Since it was the first of its kind, it had no immediate competition. However, as the success of the company increased, other companies started to produce their own brands of fitness equipment. Moreover, Life Fitness expanded its product offerings to include computerized treadmills, elliptical cross trainers, and stair climbers to its customers. As a result of increased competition and product diversity, Life Fitness's managers felt a need to have a more refined cost allocation system versus the traditional cost accounting methods of plant-wide overhead rate and departmental overhead rates followed in the company so far. They decided to use activity-based costing. Activity-based costing is a special costing method that identifies those activities which are costly to perform. It focuses on activities rather than departments as the fundamental cost objects. In ABC, costs are assigned according to the cause and effect relationship between activities and cost objects. This requires the managers to understand a classification system called the cost hierarchy to establish activity cost pools. The four categories of activity cost in this hierarchy is determined by the underlying factor that drives its costs. It shows the activities and costs incurred for every unit, number of units produced in a batch for a particular product and for a facility upkeep. By considering how the costs of different activities are consumed, Life Fitness determines a four-step procedure to compute the activity's cost for producing its core fitness equipments. As a part of the first step, the company identifies its primary activities and estimates the total manufacturing overhead costs associated with each activity. The company identifies that machines must be set up to meet the particular specifications of the production run. Next, they move raw materials to the machining department, where some parts for the units are fabricated. Then they transfer the fabricated parts to the assembly department, where the direct laborers assemble the units with engineers supervising the process. At this stage, the units are inspected. Upon passing inspection, each unit is packaged and is moved to the finished goods warehouse where they await shipment to customers. With the activities established, the total manufacturing overhead costs of each activity, known as activity cost pools, must be estimated. Keeping in mind that all the costs in activity cost pools are manufacturing overhead costs, MOH, or indirect costs, they don't include direct labor and direct material costs. With the total MOH calculated, the company now must determine how much of the total estimated $1 million relates to each activity. For the second step, the managers need to identify a cost driver, which in turn becomes allocation base for each activity. This helps them estimate the total amount that will be used during the year. For example, the company selects number of setups as an allocation base for machine setup and estimates 8,000 setups as the total amount that will be used during the year. After selecting an allocation base for each activity, the company calculates its activity cost allocation rates for each activity as the third step. They do so with the help of a formula, which divides the total estimated activity cost pool by the total estimated activity allocation base. Because these rates are estimated beforehand, the company uses them to allocate manufacturing overhead to specific jobs during the year. In the fourth and final step, Life Fitness allocates some manufacturing overhead from each activity to the individual jobs that use the activities. This is calculated by multiplying the activity cost allocation rate into the actual amount of activity allocation base by job. For example, the activity cost allocation rates computed helps the managers to allocate manufacturing overhead to a job in which one elliptical was produced. Likewise, the company used the same activity cost allocation rates to distribute the manufacturing overhead to a job in which one treadmill was produced. This completes the four-fold application to allocate the indirect costs using activity-based costing. 
Now a pertinent question arises, whether the company has really benefited from the improved cost information system. Given the fact that the company followed the traditional cost allocating systems before it reveals it on comparison, the ABC model helped reduce cost distortion. With each allocation system rendering a different amount of manufacturing overhead to each elliptical and treadmill produced, it led the management to notice that the traditional cost allocation system had been severely distorting costs. Each elliptical had been overcosted by $51, and each treadmill had been undercosted by $52. Bearing this in mind, Life Fitness could now use the activity-based costing information to make sound business decisions. They could now reevaluate the price charged for their high and low volume products. The managers realize that ABC tends to increase the cost unit of low volume products and decreases the unit cost of high volume products. Further, adopting the ABC approach helped eliminating, reducing, or simplifying all non-value-added activities and examining whether value-added activities could be improved. This example just makes it evident that activity-based costing has most definitely overcome the deficiencies of its traditional counterpart. With its growing popularity, most companies have been increasingly implementing this groundbreaking concept critical to the success of its product and process design.